here in the International Encounter for 2014 of the International Bougay Society. We've seen uh, several techniques, higher techniques of Aikijujutsu. Jujutsu. And in that sense, uh, Shidoshis, uh, you uh, have been studying this uh, several times. We have heard, uh, us, new Shidoshi, have heard of several techniques and have seen a few things, such as Haragumi. Uh, what, what could be Haragumi and how did the Shizen culture apply it on war uh, environments and so on? Well, you see, Haragumi is a new term it is a word that was coined by the, the new masters uh, in, in the 20th century. What we see, what we what we can understand from uh, from this perspective, from this new approach, is that they had to find a way uh, to to call or to explain what they're doing. It is something very particular. It is something very. Uh, anthropologically speaking, very local to, to our people, to the Shizen people. It was uh, somewhat confused since uh, the original purpose for these techniques, for this, for this kind of stuff, was not, to, was not to attend to any kind of embu, was not made to impress and then leave him alive. The idea of this, of this purpose was to, the idea of this method, of this study was to leave the samurai uh, in very odd positions, you know, uh, with arms and legs double-crossed and uh, positions that uh, would be seen as magical, as something that only demons could do because it would require supposedly uh, a huge strength, a huge power, and often with the broken neck and, and so on. So it's a psychological theory, uh, a psychological strategy towards war, right? Well, um, yes and no. Hmm. This, um, I will ask uh, if uh, Shidoshi Luis could kindly teach us about the, the correct name, the, the ancient, the, the original name that we have for it, so we can you know, go further into this theory. Shidoshi Luis could. Thank you very much, Shidoshi Okay, uh, you have been asking regarding Haragumi. Harags come, come from the abs, the abdomen area and a uh, gumi from kumu that it's the birth to, to join to unite them it's uniting the hara but the most correct for lineage for culture it's what it's called uh, reikai taimu mm -hmm. uh, reikai means example in uh, illustration it's like an example and tai means the opposite and mu it comes from take that it's war military and it's an example of what it's against or in opposite to the war. Why? Because these examples, not only as you have been asking to see those channels, not only by psychological, because of course, it was a way to generate uh, terror, to generate, uh, to be afraid of what was happening, because they don't understand, they didn't understand what has happened there. Because of course they, uh, the, the samurai appear uh, in a in a very strange, very weird positions, and with the neck broken and, and the limbs broken, and they believe, as Sidostiao has explained, that uh, this could be only uh, be applied. Of course, we are talking about feudal uh, state of mind, and it's not like us, that we are going out of the legend, we are going out of the myth, mm -hmm. and we are going into the pragmatism. So it's, it's the purpose of this, of this session to understand what has been happening in this circumstance. Mm -hmm. Then, as I have explained, the idea was to find uh, an enemy that has been uh, restrained in a very weird position, a very strength, and at the same time have broken the links. And they didn't understand how these limbs could be broken on this way. And uh, it's a way to generate like uh, mysticism of what has happened on those woods, on those forests. And uh, it was, uh, of course, psychological for the people coming after mm -hmm. the situation has, uh, has happened. Mm -hmm. 
and also a way to generate uh, on the enemy some difficult positions, some, mm -hmm. difficult, some res restrictive positions, and of course, end or kill the enemy in that way. Mm. Okay. And in which way is, uh, in this case, uh, I'll call it Haragumi, uh, because I'm trying to assimilate the regular term. Haragumi uh, distinct from the regular Aikishu Jutsu's technique. Yes, it's a, very, it's a very nice question, and you will like, especially as biologists, you will like, especially because the idea is to, to join this, this Hara in a position that it could be. Uh, it could, it's impossible to go out. Uh, we will we will find. I, I think the best way it's uh, an image, an illustration, an example in this way. <laughs> and I will ask Shidos Chao that is an expert to to, oh. to to solve these kind of of movements of explanation, who will teach us about about this way of Harumi and the most uh, known in traditional way as Erei uh, Kai Kai. Okay, please. Yes. Well, let's see then. Like, there are many kinds of examples here, and this kind of study is not only when the Hara are actually physically joined. Suppose we are here, and we are uh, all of us in a meeting or something, and suppose, for example, you come to attack me with this hand, attack you have to defend with the other hand, very nice, here I am. So once I'm here, I have blocked this angle of yours. Okay. Right. Well, from here, what I'm going to do is that you restrain. Right. Having your wrist locked like this, stepping over your your hand so your your spine lifts, and then using your own your own weight downward, having one and two violently inward. So you have your your cervical under huge stress here, or we don't have too much space, but I can show you by bringing you to the side exactly. Having this, having for instance one arm here, right. and slowly see when you injure your shoulder, okay? Uh huh. You can have, for instance, this other arm here, putting you downward like this, very nice. So you have no means to move, okay? Mm -hmm. And upward. Hi. Let's see. Now, there are some forms of Maradumi in which you are in your comfort. You, we should do forms, for example, in the regular Kijutsu forms, what one does is taking the hips, the Hara first, so you have this unbalance on your, on your spine. Right? The Kusushi. The Kusushi. Now, we, we approach it differently in Maradumi. As you come to grab firmly, what one does is this. If you feel your spine, if you feel your, your, your feet, your weight is leaning forward and um, most of all the most uh, strong sign is that your chest is close to my back. Right. So in here you cannot draw any weapon. No. So I'm, I'm, I'm free from, from any kind of, of risk here, you know, of damage and so on. So what we do is one, two, three, can you see your spine? Uh -huh. Already compressed here. Right. And there is this last step that is coming here and compressing inward. Huh. You see? Now suppose you grab with both your hands in your commodity. Exactly. So, as I was saying, it is not in every situation that you will have your, your hara joined to mine. Right. But the, the approach, the idea of doing this as if we're going to join ourselves, but you can be able to use your other hand. So what they saw is that, please hold firmly, mm -hmm. what they saw is that they would have to exactly use an angle which you wouldn't be able to use uh, the, the, the other hand easily against the you see? Right. So, a very stiff position, right? And downward, exactly. Having this hand um, um, beneath your your body, stretching the most you can, and your elbow here. 
You see? Mm -hmm. Very fragile. I'll just start to put my weight on here very slowly. Okay, here we are. And again, you cannot move. And we have your neck. We are free to manipulate your, your neck as one needs. So these are some forms of what you're asking about Harabumi. And uh, well, the idea was that you asked about the psychological aspect of it. Right. Now, when they left someone there and they found this samurai fully, you know, um, in a in a great deal of damage, and uh, his his head, his neck was all damaged as well. They would think, and they would bring this um, this fact. They would bring just what they saw to their armies and to their commands um, exactly to the commands and that would with no doubt uh, bring fear bring doubt and they would think well who were these people that could do such a, a huge damage or what could do or what exactly. put a, a person in that such awkward positions that's right I would like only to, to end this video only to ask you, uh, because I think it's very interesting for our viewers, for our followers, about your feelings, your sensations under this technique, what has happened, because many of them, many uh, say, what is happening inside of this technique, what is uh, your, from this approach, I would like to know what you have felt, especially because your your mainly question was about what's the difference between Aikido Jutsu and this special method, and I would like that you answer by yourself this question to the to the viewers, please. Well, from what I felt as a Nikkei for Shidoshi Chiago, uh, it seems that uh, there's a great deal of restraint that you're closer to the uh, to the person to the kid. The tori comes closer to a kid, and it restrains us more, our movement, in a way that it seems like if you try to grab a tanto or a sword or any kind of weapon or try to move, it seems pretty hard because you're like joined to the person in a way that the person, the tori, is, uh, can freely move and us as a kid are really restrained. Yeah. And the fact that we are uh, with Hakama, but we are people of the 21st century, I would like to ask you, as a biologist, your, what is happening in, inside of this? I mean, uh, what do you think was the main reasons that uh, these traditional people, the, this ancient culture, find a way to, to this method? And what is the most interesting part from a scientific vision? Well, uh, from what I've lived in uh, through the shoes and culture, observation is the main point here. Uh, as in science, uh, we do a great deal of observation and the traditional shoes and culture has a lot of observation to it and it applied these principles that it observed in nature to its techniques. So in that sense, uh, physiologically speaking, uh, I would say that there's a great deal of stretching the muscles, so you restrain the movement once it's fully stretched. You can't either move one way or the other. It seems that uh, once you're fully stretched, you can't go anywhere else than where the tori is taking you. Yeah, it's only one position, man. In that, in that, uh, in that place, in that way of the uh, stretching of the limb, it's only on, on one position. That's mm -hmm. right. Okay. So it seems to me. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Sidos. Thank you very much. And be very welcome for being arriving in Sidos graduation and Sidos and Red too. Well, we thank you for the explanation, Tim. Okay. Absolutely. This is a great study. Um, our culture, as you may all have seen by now, it's full of many, many pieces as a puzzle, indeed, of information and of knowledge. Well, as, um, as tribes in our origin, there are many, many uh, applications and many uh, information that are uh, part of subsets of studies. So this was one more, uh, although it may look as, uh, it, may looks as it may look as something easy and simple, it is actually something quite interesting to feel once you are completely locked and you can move and you have this pressure over your cervical or over your spine. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much.